Hey guys, this is Ron. So in this first video of our series, uh, after our little um, video zero of the kind of environment setup, uh, we'll be talking about the layout of a typical C program, right? So we'll start off very simply uh, with just our standard hello like we did before. Um, we'll create another function and then talk about uh, how to organize uh, our setup a little bit better uh, with header files. Okay, so one of the things that I want to mention is the difference between a definition and a declaration. So I've got a link here uh, that I'll put up on GitHub. It takes you to Geeks for Geeks. And if you haven't checked out Geeks for Geeks before, I invite you to do so. Uh, they got a lot of great articles, tutorials, walkthroughs, just a lot of cool uh, programming uh, concepts. Well, this morning we find uh, definitions and declarations. So a declaration, and in this case they're talking about a variable, but in our case we'll be mostly uh, focused on functions. But it's the same basic concept, but it basically informs the compiler the following information. Its name, its type, uh, and if it takes an initial value, right? But again, we'll look at it in the context of a function. Whereas a definition uh, just says where the variable gets stored, right? The memory address of the variable. So it's like an allocation, right? So in our case, uh, again, we'll be looking at it from the point of view of a function. So let's go ahead and begin working on our hello.c that we had before. And typically in every C program uh, that you're gonna compile into an executable and run, there needs to be a main function, right? This is the, the entry point into your program. And so typical definition, uh, declaration, we'll kind of walk through this piece, but typically the way that you'll see the main function laid out is main returns an integer. Its name is main, and it takes the following arguments. It takes an integer, and it takes uh, an array of pointers. And again, you don't have to understand that yet, but that's typically how you're going to see uh, the main function laid out. You may see some people like to write it uh, more like that. So it's a pointer to an array, something to that effect, right? I typically write mine just char star star argv. So it's a pointer to an array of pointers, something, right? So we have our bracket and our bracket. We have a printf and we'll say hello developers again. This time we'll yell at them, why not? And we'll return zero. Returning zero is, is fairly typical when everything worked successfully in a POSIX system or a Unix Linux system, right? Returning zero means cool, everything worked out great. All right, now if we try to compile this, I've got two tabs up right now. If we go ahead and try to compile that, we're gonna run into some issues. So if you didn't watch the first video, we kind of walked through this a little bit before, but essentially GCC is our compiler. TAC O means this is the output of this compilation, and then it's gonna take in the file hello.c as its source. And it's saying, hey, implicit declaration of function printf, right? So it doesn't understand what printf is. And so it throws uh, an error. Now it made the, um, it made the executable and the executable works, but you know, during compilation, it wasn't quite aware of it but it threw it as a warning. It eventually was able to link in uh, printf and we're able to, to use it. But we don't want warnings and stuff like that. We wanna make sure that when we're compiling, everything works cleanly the way it's supposed to. So what you'll typically see is at the top of our program, you'll see something like this, pound include stdio.h, right? 
So this is a header file that has a declaration of what the printf function is. So now when we go to recompile, this time it compiles, no warnings are thrown, okay? So what just happened, right? So we obviously brought in a header file, but what is a header file? So we come here, there's a, this I did a quick Google just so that you could get something to go back to, but tutorials point has a, a quick write up on what a C header file is. And so what you'll find is that header files can be done in a couple different ways. We saw this syntax, this pound include with our less than, greater than, and the name of the header file, right? And so this is bringing in, uh, bringing in some things to our program. And in our case, we're worried about a declaration for the printf function. So if I come back here, the standard library, which stdio.h is a part of, they're located in user include. If I hit my tab, there's a whole lot of files in here, right? So I'm worried about stdio.h. And so cool, cool. We have this file that has a bunch of things into it. We'll talk about this portion here in a second, um, but this is basically a header guard to make sure that um, if stdio.h got included into our program multiple times, it's going to say, okay, well, is this thing defined? No, it is not. We'll then go ahead and define it and then do these things. So the next time this thing gets included, it's gonna say, okay, is this thing defined? Yes, it is. Well, then I'm not gonna do what's in here. So this protects us from um, not including the same kind of things into our program multiple times. But we're here to look for printf. So I hit my uh, forward slash and printf. Hit enter. And what we see is there's this line here, extern int f printf. Well, that's f printf. We want just printf. So extern int printf, const char star, so on and so forth. What this saying is saying, it's declaring that there is a printf function out there, right? It returns an integer. It takes the following arguments, char star, and then there could be multiple arguments after it, right? And so what this does for the compiler is it now says, oh, there is a printf function out there. I now know what it takes for arguments and I know what it's going to return. And so it no longer had to you know, complain when we went to compile it, right? So this is how we told our program about printf. Now, what would happen if I wanted to write my own functions? So we're gonna do a uh, function called say, hello, right? So we wanna call say hello there. It's just gonna say hello. So I could come down here and let's say um, we're not gonna send anything to say hello and we're not gonna receive anything back from hello. So we say it is void because it's not you know, gonna return anything and we're not sending anything to it. So it's also void. And in here, we'll just have printf, and we'll say hello. And we don't need to return anything because we said this is a void function. And we should be good, right? So we have written the say hello function, and we've called the say hello function. Now, just to get into some typical C stuff, you may want to name your things uh, in a different way, right? This kind of syntax is very popular with things like um, Python. Um, I think they call it snake case. Um, you may see other people say you can't use snake case and C together, whatever, right? So you're gonna, depending upon if you're working on another 
uh, a project with other people. Hopefully you'll have an agreed upon uh, way of naming things. You may see, um, let me go back down. You may see it more done like that. Whatever, you know, is your kind of standard that, you know, you wanna follow, go for it. For now, I'm just gonna use snake case and, and we're not gonna care. The point is, is that I have this say hello function and I'm calling it right here. And you would think everybody would be happy. If I go back to my GCC line, it's not happy. It's saying conflicting types for say hello. Well, that doesn't make sense. And a previous implicit declaration of say hello was here. Okay, so let's let's unpack this a little bit. So we have an implicit declaration of say hello was done on line five. So line five is here, say hello. Okay, so what I'm gathering here is that we called say hello, GCC didn't know about say hello yet, and so it made some assumptions about it. It made an assumption that it returns an integer type and then that's that's fine but now it says wait 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 if i'm making the assumption that it returns an integer type how come there's another uh use of say hello here but it's a void return so it's not returning anything right so it made the assumption here when it was initially called but then we see it down here it doesn't return integer at all right so this is more a definition of the say hello function, but it made uh, an, an implicit declaration up here. So instead we can actually make a declaration. So instead of it being implied, we're just gonna say, hey, there is this function called say hello. It doesn't return anything and it doesn't take anything and you should be happy about that, all right? So, come back here, I up arrow, and in fact, it is happy about that. So we defined it up here, or correction, we declared it here, so this is an explicit declaration instead of it having to imply what we want, and then we actually defined it down here. Now. C's a little bit weird in that had we instead decided to put this above our main, it would serve as both the definition and the declaration, and we would have compiled it just fine. That might be fine, but you might be in a project um, that says, hey, your main function should be the first function that you see in this file, right? Well, in order to achieve that, then we would have to move our function below, which means I now need to declare it above. Now, what if we decide that, okay, well, our main function is, we or we just want this one source file, this hello.c, to only have the main function in it. We wanna keep it as clean as possible. And what we're going to do is we're gonna organize all of our other functions like say hello into a utility that we uh, can pull in as needed, right? So we wanna write it once and we're gonna include it in multiple executables, programs, you know, whatever. We're, we're just gonna organize it a little bit better. Well, to do that, we can, we can uh, uh, essentially create our own header file in our own source files just for these utility functions. So let's do that. So we do a colon and we'll do a V split and I'm gonna do, we'll just call this uh, utility. And we'll call it utility.h. So this is now our header file that's going to be used as, uh, as our utility functions, right? Well, your header files typically only have declarations in them. You typically don't have a whole lot of uh, 
definitions where you're actually writing out the whole functions. We're just gonna basically let other programs know that there are these, these uh, functions available out there and here's how you would call them. Just like we saw with, with stdio.h. What we didn't see is the whole printf function written out. We just had a uh, uh, declaration that said, hey, here's printf, here's what it takes in, and here's what it will return to you. So we'll do the same thing. But we want to protect ourselves so that if for some reason utility.h got included multiple times in our executable, it only actually writes it into our file one time. And so we do that with the header guard. So we saw before we had this if n def, if not defined, and you typically see it named the same as the actual file, so utility.h in caps. We'll do a pound define. So we're saying if it's not defined, go ahead and define it. And then end our if. So everything in the center here will actually happen, but it'll only happen one time, the first time when utility.h isn't defined. And so if I hit escape, I'll hit control W, arrow to the right to get here, and I will delete this line out, and I will paste it in here. All right. So that's all that's gonna be in our utility.h header file. Now, we wanted to organize our utility functions, right? We don't wanna leave say hello inside of our hello.c file. So we'll do a split, colon split, and we'll do a utility.c. All right, I will control W, arrow over. I will hit V to highlight, arrow down, hit D, come back paste. Okay, so now we have a separate file that has say hello in it. But in this file, no, we're calling the printf function. Well, we need to tell it what the printf function is. So we'll also pound include stdio.h and we're good. So now utility.c has a single function called say hello, and utility.h lets everyone know about the say hello function. Well, in order to bring that over here, we also do a pound include. And in this case, instead of using brackets like this, we're gonna use quotations and it's called utility and the reason that we do that is when we have brackets like this GCC knows that this is going to be inside of user include when we use the quotations it's going to look locally for it right now there's ways of changing the path so it looks in other places, but essentially your brackets like this are going to tell it, look elsewhere for this file. And in our case, that's user include. But when it's percent or the quotation symbols, it's gonna look locally for that utility.h file. And so we save that, come back, I'm gonna remove hello just so that we can watch it get rebuilt. I have my hello.c, I have utility.c, and utility.h now. So this time when I do my GCC, I'm gonna say my output is gonna be a hello binary. I wanna include hello.c, I wanna include uh, utility.c, and utility.h and it compiles and it works right and so what we've done is we've made our program um, 
just a little bit more organized. We had to declare a main function. So this is a uh, declaration, definition, you name it, right? This is where the work is done. We created a header file down here. This served as a declaration for the say hello function. And then we defined our say hello function inside of the utility.c file. We made sure we had header guards in place so that if this were to get included multiple times, so if we were to, let's say, just for this, we're gonna YY to copy, and we'll paste this in a couple times. So we've now included the same header file multiple times. If I go back to compile, it's perfectly happy with that because it again, it only builds this one time because this, of this header guard. So what would happen then if I took the header guard out? What we'll see, in this case, nothing. Let's remove. Well, in this case, it didn't throw a fit, which surprises me, because I would have thought it would have um, threw a fit. Now, the potential is, is if we had other things in here, rather than just a single declaration, it may have thrown a fit. Um, but typically, you want those things in there, right? That protects. Um, maybe you're making a global variable in here. I, I don't know. Um, I try to keep that kind of stuff out of my header files um, and only put, you know, uh, declarations and things of that nature in there but when you start building structs and other things and, and we'll get to those um, this will continue to grow and so to protect uh, yourself um, you go ahead and you put those in there because again it might you know cause an issue so and maybe I didn't write I probably did but anyway um, you'll want to have those in there. So just to recap again, typical layout of a C program always has a main function. We have the, um, the idea of a definition versus a declaration. So this is a definition. It's defining what uh, say hello actually does, whereas this is declaring down here that the say hello function does exist and these are the parameters it takes. And so getting those things kind of lined up and understanding them helps us uh, understand some of the errors that may get thrown at us when we you know, try to compile. We have our two different types of includes, one with brackets or the less than greater than and one with our quotation. The difference being that this one is gonna look at a, a path for this uh, um, header file, which happens to be in user include, whereas this one will look locally uh, for our file because we wrote it and it's a part of our source, right? And so we've gotten those kind of lined up and it will help us kind of grow our program out and hopefully it continues to be manageable, right? Because if we just keep adding all of this functionality into one single program, it does it means that this continues to grow and it gets harder to maintain. But two, um, if we wanted to use say hello again in another program, well, we'd have to copy it out of here, put it in there. But instead, if we have it in like a utility uh, setup like this, all we have to do is pound include this and make sure both of those get included when we go ahead and compile. All right. So hope this was at least somewhat helpful for you. Um, like I said, I'm going through and relearning C. And so, you know, getting some of these foundational topics down um, will help you in the future. So thank you for watching. And uh, like I said, hopefully it's useful and you'll keep coming back. All right. Bye.